Hello, and welcome to Chesapeake Technology Incorporated's training video on how to create a new project within SonarWiz 5. I've started already by pulling up SonarWiz 5 on the computer. In order to create a new project, I'm going to begin with clicking on the Application or 5 button in the top left hand corner. That'll bring up a drop down menu, and then I'll click New for Create a New Project. That'll bring up a dialog box in which we'll put the basic information about the project we're about to begin. <clears throat> so I'll start with a vessel name. A vessel called the Mayflower. Then you need to input a project name, which for today's purposes I will call Demo001. And the next box is uh, slightly more crucial than the previous two, because that box includes the project folder name. Um, <clears throat> within this folder is stored all of your data, your project itself, the mosaic project that you're creating, and several other settings and adjustments that you'll make to that project along the way. So it is, it is very important to make sure that there is only one SonarWiz 5 or any SonarWiz uh, project saved in that folder at one time. So again, that is only one SonarWiz project per project folder at all times. <clears throat> in previous versions we've had issues where uh, users have saved multiple projects into the same folder and that causes data to sort of overlap between the projects and it skews the results into something that they're uh, not necessarily looking for. So there are some safeguards in place to prevent that in this version um, but it's just again it's just something to keep in mind that one sonar with project per folder. <clears throat> So, once you have your project folder named, you can uh, keep moving on down. The next bit of important information that we want to input about the project is the approximate project position. So as you can see, on the left hand side of the screen here, there is a, uh, there's a couple of boxes that include latitude and longitude coordinates. Now if you know your coordinates right off the top of your head and want to input those manually, you can certainly do so by clicking on those boxes scrolling around as you see my cursor doing now. You can delete certain coordinates, uh, input others, so on and so forth. However, if you're unsure of your exact coordinates off the top of your head or would like the computer to generate them for you, you can head over to the right hand side of the screen to the automatic coordinate generators. The first option we have in this is the use GPS position. So this button will essentially withdraw coordinates from your live GPS feed and input them into the boxes on the left. Since I am not hooked up to a live GPS feed, that button is grayed out. The next option that we have is the Select from World Cities. So, we'll click on that, pulls down a drop down menu, and let's say I'm in Auckland, New Zealand. So I click on Auckland, and as you can see on the left, it brings up the coordinates for that major world city. Uh, it is also important to note that this drop-down menu is essentially just an Excel spreadsheet. You can find it by going to your SonarWiz 5 project folder. As you can see, mine is saved on the C drive. It just came with the software when I downloaded it. And then come down to the document entitled All Cities. If you click on that, you'll find a list of all the cities available, and you can input the coordinates. So that way, if you know that you're never going to Auckland, you can delete it and its coordinates. Or, if you find out that you're actually going to another city, say, uh, you know, Hiroshima, Japan, uh, and you need to input some data about Hiroshima, then you can go into that, uh, obviously, input the data you need to have, and then every time you go into SonarWiz, you can click on the select from World Cities button and your data will be in there. So that is that option. The next option we have is the get from file option. This is extremely helpful. So you click on that. That'll pull up another dialog box. Here we go. And this is this is really crucial because in order to make sure that you're getting the appropriate coordinates you really just have to make sure that the, uh, the file that you're gonna pull the coordinates from is the or is part of the data that you're going to be using for your project. Otherwise, you're going to get coordinates from another uh, another set of data or another location, obviously. So I'll click on that, and SonarWiz 5 will extract the coordinates from that file and put them over here in our coordinate boxes. 
So, once we've got that set, we can move on down to the next section, which is the coordinate source. This has also caused some issues in the past, so hopefully we have simplified the process for you. <clears throat> now, there are three options here for uh, where to withdraw our navigation information. The option on the bottom, always use ship position, is just going to take, or is going to always take the, uh, the navigation information from your GPS on your ship. Um, also, or however, really, uh, if you're, if you have purchased equipment such that your fish relays, uh, really credible or, or highly accurate GPS, you know, navigation information, um, on his own, then you can select the always use fish position. However, these bottom two are uh, rarely chosen. Um, really, really, what most of our users use and what we recommend is the auto uh, option. This option simply says that use or says to use the uh, navigation information from the fish if it's valid, and if it's not, then use the navigation information from the ship. So again, that is the most recommended sort of the default option that uh, we we suggest most of our users take advantage of. Then the other section of this box is the time constant for course smoothing. This simply uh, deals with the section or the period of time over which sonar waves will smooth the data. So this ranges from 3 to 1200. But again, we have sort of determined a, a default setting, and we've determined that to be about 300 pings. So that'll smooth your, smooth your data for 300 pings, um, and it just sort of gets rid of any excess noise in your data um, and prevents like really extreme outliers, um, just so that you can get, you can get a more accurate picture right off the bat. So that concludes the coordinate source. Then we'll move down to the coordinate system. <clears throat> so as you can see, SonarWiz 5 has already pulled up this UTM WGS 1984 system. Uh, for me, since I have selected, automatically select a coordinate system. However, say I'm doing a project for uh, the North Carolina government, and they've asked me to present my data within a certain, uh, certain, certain coordinate system. If that's the case, I can click on Browse Coordinate Systems, <laughs> and that will pull up another dialog box. There we go. <clears throat> so, within this group, I can pick the basic coordinate system. I will select State Plains NAD 27 based US foot. That's really useful. So this, this particular section is just really useful if you're uh, the person <clears throat> who has commissioned your report is seeking uh, a specific coordinate system. So as you can see, I've, my uh, my project has been commissioned to use the State Plains NAD 27 based US foot system. And within that, I will scroll down until I find the North Carolina option. So there you go. I've got my NAD 27 North Carolina State Plains US foot coordinate system. So I'll click OK. And that essentially sets, uh, sets my project to translate all of the data it's receiving into this NAD27 format and then export all of my findings in that format so that the people who commissioned my report are satisfied with the system in which the uh, report is generated. So let's just do a quick review of everything that we covered. So we named the vessel project name, project folder, which is crucial. Again, only one sonar was project per project folder. Then we named the latitude and longitude of our approximate position for this project using our automatic coordinate generators. We determined where we're re receiving our navigation information from, smoothed it for 300 pings, and then also determined the coordinate system for our project using the browse coordinate systems um, option. So. Once you're satisfied with everything, you can go ahead up and click OK, and that will begin the creation of the new project. So it's currently removing the project that was on there and creating a new one. There we go. OK. All right. So you can see all of our buttons are online here. There we go.
And if you're interested in seeing uh, just where exactly your project is saved, or uh, really just want to check out the rest of the project folder, you can go to Tools and then Open Project Folder. And you can see Demo001, my project folder. You can see where it's saved. And then I can also see everything else that was created along with my project. Um, so all of these files come standard. They're just like default files that come with the project. Uh, all of these folders are there. Various things are assigned to be saved into these folders, such as this XTF is where most of my data is going to come from. Um, but we'll get into that in a later post. So there you have it. That concludes creating a new project within SonarWiz 5.